First of all, I want to thank y'all for being here bright and early after many of us didn't get any sleep last night. So I just want to thank you. moment for us to make history here in South Carolina. At about 2 a.m. this morning, the Associated Press called the race um, based on the numbers that were coming in and, and what's left to, to count. And I'm deeply humbled uh, that the voters of South Carolina's first congressional district had the faith, the trust, and the confidence in us uh, and in me to, to lead the low country from here forward. My job starts today. And uh, I'm going to put in every way my loyalty lies with the low country, and I will always put the low country first. So for those folks that are out there today that, that maybe weren't with us yesterday, um, I'm asking for a chance, a chance to prove to you that I will be a compassionate leader, a good listener, an independent thinker, and that I will be thoughtful and I will be a compassionate leader from here on out. And I'm just so excited to have the support of so many. And my job on day one is to save and protect Paris Island. That is the most important issue right now in South Carolina's first congressional district. But I'm here today to thank everybody. We did it. We did it. So, very exciting and, and deeply humbling. Uh, Nancy, your mm -hmm. opponent uh, just released a statement saying both candidates have agreed that every ballot must be counted and every voice heard before an election vote is called. Right. Right. I can't say that. Right. I haven't spoken to my opponent or his campaign. I am, I, I am disappointed to, to read that statement this morning. Um, the, the voters have spoken, and, and when the election results, when they're all said and done and counted, which will likely be later today, I believe we'll even have a, a larger victory than we do right now based on what's left to come. Um, but my job starts right now. I, I want to unite the low country and rebuild the low country in South Carolina and our nation. And uh, my first job right now today is to start to work and save Paris Island. That's what we're going to do. And the voters have spoken, and um, I'm deeply humbled by their support. Nancy, how does it feel? You know, 2018, mm -hmm. this district was a big win for Democrats, and mm -hmm. now it's back under public control. Mm -hmm. right. It was obviously a big goal of the state party to get this one back. What does it mean to be the person who did that? Right. Well, it's enormous. If you look at the turnout, it was 70 to 75 percent of registered voters turned out yesterday in an early voting. And it's remarkable to have that many residents that that many americans come out and vote in this election it's huge and uh it's historic in so many ways it's historic for the low country and the state of south carolina and i'm deeply humbled by by everyone that came out i mean i the last day the last week of the race i knocked on over a thousand doors and i talked to voters directly and we built a really strong grassroots campaign we had the republican party and drew mckissick is here today with us we built such a strong grassroots organization. It was unlike anything that South Carolina has seen on the ground here. And that was why we won, because we went right to the voters and we talked to them directly and talked about the issues that matter to them. Jobs in the economy, health care, the environment, and Paris Island. And Nancy, we, we discussed kind of bouncing off of uh, Cunningham's statement about uh, not all of the ballots being counted, mm -hmm. specifically in Dorchester County, around 13,000 ballots right. had issues and were miscounted at this point. Well, they weren't, yeah, they weren't miscounted. I guess they couldn't be counted yet because it, it, of the way the barcode was printed on the printer. They're going to remedy that today, so we should have those results later today or tomorrow. But even when you look at the 13,000 ballots in Dorchester County, you look at the lead that we have in Dorchester County, when those ballots are going to be counted, 
I believe we will extend our lead even further. Right now it's at 3%, but I believe well, we're going to win this thing by 4 to 5% at the end of the day. So at this point, are you declaring victory? Absolutely, 100%. And my job starts now to bring people together uh, all across the district, whether they were with us in the election or not. It's my job to represent every single resident of the Low Country. And my lo loyalty lies here in the Low Country, regardless of your political affiliation. I'm here to serve you, and the hard work starts today. I've got to deliver on all the all, all the promises and policy that I declared in the election, and I, today, starting today, we're going to map that out and we're going to do it. A lot of other Republican wins mm -hmm. here in South Carolina last night. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're one of them, but from a broader perspective, what do you see that as, as sending in terms of a message for South Carolina well, Democrats? It certainly shows momentum. We gained House state house and state senate seats that I didn't even know were in play last night and we had enormous wins and I think it goes to show there is this undercurrent of support for conservative ideas particularly fiscal conservative policy in the state of South Carolina and we saw the pendulum swing that way last night and so it's it's a great day not only for the low country but for every resident of South Carolina. Do you feel like most of the voters came out just um, last, yesterday to really support you? Do you think that was the final push that you guys needed? Um, no, in, in early voting, we were doing really well um, when we looked at the returns that were coming in late Monday night and yesterday. Um, 70 to 75 percent of, of voters turned out in, in most precincts. And so you saw people from the left, the right, the middle turn out and vote and wanted to have their voices heard and their votes counted. And it's enormous to, to win by, by that margin with that many individuals, that many voters turning out. It's, it's huge. And it's deeply, deeply humbling. And I have, a I have an enormous responsibility starting this morning and representing everybody that lives here. And I intend to do that. Aside from Paris Island, what are your priorities when you get into Congress? Um, to continue to reduce the unemployment rate here in South Carolina, we have about a 5.1% unemployment rate. Pre-COVID, our unemployment was 1.86%. So jobs in the economy are really important that as we continue to reopen our economy and open more industry here, that we ensure we put the policies and incentives in place to get people who want to work back to work. Um, also, health care is a big one. Republicans and Democrats together both fumbled on health care. And so, regardless of what happens to Obamacare, finding ways that we can make inroads where we can reach across the aisle and find small ways to make a big difference and get more, better access to health care for people, a better quality of care and at a lower price, in whatever framework that looks like going forward. And then also, infrastructure is a big one. Um, if I have the opportunity to have my say and have my pick on committees, I want to be on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. We have enormous needs down here because we are coastal, our roads and bridges to build and maintain them are so much exponentially more expensive to do that here than other parts of the state because we are coastal, we are beach, we are marsh and salt uh, water marshes here. That's important, but also the environment. Offshore drilling is another one. We've got a 10 year ban, but what can we do to ensure that it's permanent? And I will work on truly bipartisan legislation and I will file it this year to, to make to make progress uh, for banning offshore drilling off South Carolina's coast and making it permanent. Have you heard from anybody else in the delegation? Yeah, I've got I've got about 500 text messages and I haven't been able to to get through all of them. But the phone is ringing off the hook from folks and Ambassador Haley just tweeted her congratulations to us. I mean, everybody is uh, the governor called at I think he called Governor McMaster called at about 2:30. Said he wasn't going to go to bed until he heard I'd won the race, and uh, he called about 2:30 a.m. this morning. So. We've been fielding calls and texts and emails all night. And we got about one hour. <laughs> and Nancy, being outside of this spot mm -hmm. right here, obviously it's very close to you. Do you just want to reflect on that and what it's like to see all of your sporting yeah, out here? Yeah, I, uh, I started here and um, 25 years ago when I dropped out of school at the age of 17, this is where my first job was. And uh, at that time in my life, I didn't know what my future would hold. And I used to stand on a piece of duct tape right in there and I would yell at the cooks in the back how my customers wanted their hash browns. And to go from that place to a year later entering the Citadel and being the first woman to graduate from there, being in business for 21 years, being a state lawmaker for three, and now making history in South Carolina as the first Republican woman elected to Congress, I can't tell you how, mean, how much that means to me and to my daughter and my son. My, my daughter's here today and, and all the young women out there and everybody that's out there, regardless of where you come from, the color of your skin, your zip code, um, your gender, your orientation, that even when you fail, you can survive. If you work hard, you can win, you can be successful, you can achieve anything that you want to in life, because that's what the American dream is all about. Is It's about having second chances, and I've had a number of them in my life, and I wanted to finish 
where this all started. And uh, it's deeply humbling to be back here today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do. I want to give hugs. We got masks on. Oh, <laughs> so, thank you so much, Alex.